And Romancy, I remember really well the last time you were here because we did the uh, immensely beautiful mm. St. Matthew's Passion. Yeah. And uh, also because uh, during the first concert, all the hairs on my bow fell off. Oh. <laughs> and I, I, I know the feeling. <laughs> <laughs> and I actually had to yes. sneak backstage and yes. get a new bow mm. and sneak back in. Yes. And it was, uh, but it did not ruin the Good. beautiful performance. Good. Um, but uh, what I found really interesting that week, already on the Monday, maybe just half an hour into the rehearsal, was that our sound was transformed. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah, and also this week, listening to the orchestra, yeah. I found there's something happening to the sound mm. when you are here. Oh, that's nice you say that. I hope it's a good thing happening. <laughs> it's a very good thing. <laughs> I remember, I was actually thinking today, and I remember this from before as well, that the orchestra makes a beautiful sound, that it, it has worked for so much time, so many years to, to make this quality. It has real quality. And um, so I realized this morning we were working on Beethoven, actually trying to s make the sound in some places less beautiful, mm. more t dramatically ugly, you know, mm. not very ugly, but just giving it an edge. And I remember this from before, not only the sound, but to be honest, you don't expect a symphony orchestra, a philharmonic, mm. to make great Baroque music. <laughs> you know, it's not what you normally expect. No. But, but I knew this would be fantastic because I'd met some of your colleagues before, mm quite a lot of them over the years in festivals or different orchestras or teaching. And I knew that, that how wonderful they are. So I sort of knew this would be okay, and it was, it was fantastic. Because the passion is, uh, a passion is as much an, a chamber thing as an orchestra thing. Mm. You know, the woodwinds are often the soloists, violin solos as well. And the, the music making is, ta is very collaborative, rather than a conductor mm. saying, do this, do that. It's more following the musical line of another person. And the orchestra was so good at that, it was very moving, of course. And then coming back here and hearing this sound, and we have a soloist, this, this project, Spinen, who makes a beautiful sound on a piano. Yeah. He, it's never, it's, it has great projection, but it's never forced, and so it has a lovely warmth to it. Mm. And the combination of him and the orchestra is just, just a dream. I, I, I love this. So I'm really enjoying this, the sound and the feel of the orchestra, plus its lovely working atmosphere, good, wonderful colleagues. Wow, that's lovely to hear. Yeah. And I agree, because I don't play in the Beethoven concerto. It was uh, absolutely fantastic and mm. so lively you also make yeah. everything so lively and mm. being a baroque violinist you are used to performing in much smaller ensembles and improvising and making music on the spot yeah. i guess yes. how do you try to implement this with a huge symphony orchestra yeah i find i'm, I'm finding as time goes on i mean in as i meet orchestras perhaps as i get better as well um but um, or orchestras, I mean Oslo Philharmonic, for example, can cope here and technically with a huge detail of articulation, which perhaps 20 years ago didn't really happen, but there's been a huge change of thinking and, a, and a, of technique. So it's possible now. Mm. So I did play a lot with period instrument ensembles, mm. which were generally smaller or much smaller. Mm. And you could go into great detail of articulation. But I don't feel nowadays I'm sacrificing or missing a level. In mm. fact, sometimes I think the early music people have gone perhaps too far. It's become too analytical sometimes. Mm. And I speak about myself in that way also. So um, in no way do I feel that there's any sense of compromise mm. about uh, that, that these are not period instruments. In mm. fact, I think it's far more healthy now that the Oslo Philharmonic, I gather that last week you did Churangalila, yes. or, or, you know, yes. that you can do Churangalila one week and then an early piece of Beethoven in a very classical style the next week and do them both in an absolutely convincing stylistic way. This is amazing. Uh, and it's becoming 
more the way that people that orchestras are thinking about style mm. almost before they've played a note how mm. should i play this piece you know mm. yes is it the level of each musician you think uh, that has that is higher is that why we think differently and why we are mm. our studies that they i i think it's a it's a big generalization to make but uh the the technical level of each person is more equal than it used to be. It, it perhaps, I'm, I don't know because I wasn't there, but I'm guessing that in generations before, of course you had your star players, mm. but the, the distance technically between the absolute top and the, the sort of least talented mm. was quite big. Mm. Nowadays, the, the level is so high. I mean, as we all know, to get a seat in an orchestra like this, in this orchestra, is really tough, the audition process. You know, your the, the, the audition uh, jury yes. is looking for an extremely high level. Yes, it is difficult. Yeah. yeah. And that means that everyone here, they can really play, not just play, but understand. I think the musical intelligence is very high. I mean, I'm Oslo Philharmonic, it definitely is. Uh, so that means you can immediately talk uh, in, in ways that perhaps you couldn't with other types of orchestra. You could talk about the harmonic shape and people immediately know what you mean. Some orchestras, you say the word harmonic and they think they think of their, they remember their harmony lessons and they immediately switch off. Oh, God, I hated <laughs> harmony. You know, but, but with, with in Oslo, yes. you can say, you can talk about how something is put together and people are with you, they mm. get it. Mm. So that's, that's fantastic. Um, and you don't it, miss your Baroque bows. No, I don't. In fact, I marvel at how sometimes the lightness people can produce from a bow which was designed not for heaviness, but for more, um, let's say, equal bow stroke, how much nuance people can get nowadays. Mm. Um, so the old excuse, well, this is easier with the right bow. Mm. These, you know, these musicians are showing the instrument you use is almost irrelevant to the musical result. Mm. You can have the absolute perfect violin and bow and mm. have a horrible result. That it's is a, true. Yeah, it really is. <laughs> so, um, and I've always believed that. I liked playing period instruments, mm. but I didn't do it because I thought it was right. I did it purely selfishly that I quite liked the feeling, the vibration of these instruments and what they did. I also liked that they had limits and you were exploring yes. the limits. Mm. Now you come to modern instruments, I in no way miss the old instruments. Mm. It's all about the musicians holding the instruments, mm. that's what matters. Yeah, and um, vibrato, since I am a violinist, mm. in all kinds of music from early music to contemporary, yeah. it's always an issue. Mm. And uh, what I found and find so liberating with you mm. is that you hardly yeah. talk, you hardly yeah. mention yeah. the use of vibrato. I always <laughs> think if, if a day goes with, with the word not mentioned, it's a good day <laughs> because it means we're solving our musical, uh, um, um, pr not problems, questions. Mm. We're solving them without ever having to get as far as think. I think vibrato should be almost the last thing we think about. Mm. The, the dynamic, how loud it is, the balance in the orchestra, um, am I important, am I not, you know, mm. who is important, the harmonic stress, the phrasing, the articulation, and then if you still have, it have, uh, have questions, then the vibrato would be the last thing to think about. Mm. That, and, and I'm finding with the, the musicians here in, in Oslo that there's never a problem, no one's using inappropriate vibrato because they're already They've made so many decisions before that they think about vibrato, the vibrato one is the right decision. It's, it's some orchestras, literally, mm. Monday morning, 10 o'clock, they say, what should we do about vibrato? <laughs> and you say, well, just let it evolve, let it evolve naturally. Yes. But it's the first thing they think about, it should mm. be the last. Yeah, interesting. Yeah. And s but we do know there are some conductors who walk in and at 10 o'clock say no vibrato. Yes. Now, I don't understand where they get this from. It's often a, a personal thing. They've maybe had bad experiences, either in their own playing or he ha ha hearing orchestras where the, it's sort of out of control. It's so strange how they use this. I mean, this 
it's not to be, uh, supposed to be anything you put on, on or mm. off. That's yeah. what you're exactly. saying. And the moment a string, well, I mean, I was Sometimes, a string player. Sometimes, of course. I, if, if you, you think of a string. negative in your left hand, there's going to be negatives around. You mm. don't want negatives. Mm. Uh, I will always say use vibrato, use it in a creative way. Some places nothing, some places a lot, but you're all the time thinking what you need. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And this week, it's an all Beethoven program. Yeah. We're performing maybe one of the, the most famous symphony. Mm. Everybody can hum the main yeah. theme. And yeah. Yeah, and it's uh, mm. magnificent. What is your relationship to mm. the Beethoven Fifth? You know, it's, uh, I don't know how often the or your orchestra plays the Fifth. Yeah, everybody thinks we play it all the time, yeah. which we don't know, uh, which we but do not do. No, I, but I wonder how often does it come every year, would no, you no, say? No, no, no. No, quite. Um, that it has this reputation mm. that it's played so much, mm. but it's actually not played that much. So it, it needs work. It needs to be done well, of course. It's, it's not an easy symphony. Um, I have to say, I treat it with great respect, but partly because it was one of the first symphonies I ever conducted, mm. and I had no idea how unbelievably difficult <laughs> that would yeah. be. I just thought, we all know this, this will be easy, and it wasn't. So I had quite a shock, but it was a good shock to have. Mm. I was a student, and I was about 19 or 20, and it was a real shock. Okay, you can imagine. Uh, yeah, so I've always treated this with great respect. Um, I love that story about Toscanini, who even as an old man was still studying the score. Mm. And uh, he came to a rehearsal very tired and someone said, why are you, why are you so tired? Oh, I was up at five this morning <laughs> studying the, the symphony. But it's Beethoven Fifth, you know it. He said, yes, but I might have missed something. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I love this story because yeah. it does show that you must treat this piece with respect. Yes. And I think it's a great piece. And there's a danger that we all know it. So we can slip into an automatic way of playing, mm. which is like almost like a, me a physical memory of how perhaps it, of a, of a picture of the piece from, from before. Mm. And when we should be in the business of creating on stage. Mm. So we should be listening to ourselves all the time and questioning the piece. And I'm, the more, as I do the piece more and more, I think, uh, we, there are moments of great violence and mm. heaviness mm. and almost warlike anger mm. and triumph. But the overall issue is between a darkness and light and joy. Mm. Um, uh, so, so I'm more and more trying to find the, the joy in the piece. Mm. N lightness is not quite the right word. I mean light in the sense of shining yeah, yeah, light. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. Because there's a heaviness, but it's a grandeur, a nobility. Mm. It's a very, it's full of love and joy, I think, mm. especially as it comes to the end. So uh, I'm, I try to not to let it become, we have an English expression, tub thumping. Mm -hmm. You know, that uh, just sort of making big noise. Yes. Aren't I clever? I can be so loud. You know, uh, that sort of thing. Yeah, no. That it has a message, uh, and the message should be uplifting for yeah. us. Yeah. yeah. Do you think about some colors uh, in music? I'm more, I don't so much think, I'm not someone no. who thinks it, I'm never, not a terribly visual person actually. No. I, I don't think very much in colours. In, I sometimes wonder if I'm a little colour blind. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, but, you, but you want I, the light. I nice. think more in, um, I would think more like sort of in the sense of what poetry mm. would you use. Um, I, uh, last week I was doing the, the Ninth Symphony with mm. the famous Andy Freude, the Ode yeah. to Joy, which any of the words uh, used in that, the way he uses Freude, Joy, and uh, a kiss for the whole yeah. world, these things. Uh, the more I think of words, actually, mm. to sort of, um, as inspiration for an idea, mm. yeah. And what about the piano concerto? It's uh, magnificent, but he, and he's playing a regular Steinway. Yes. Yes. Which, which, of course, is, that's an interesting challenge because mm. Beethoven's piano was much smaller and lighter. Mm. And in fact, um, uh, in this concerto, the highest note uh, mm. is used of mm. Beethoven's piano, but this wow. piano still has lots, lots more <laughs> yes. notes at either end, at the highest and the lowest. And um, uh, so, but I think what our soloist, he's so clever at f making us feel we're hearing a huge breadth mm. of an instrument, but we're only hearing a, a part of the instrument, mm. but also he has a great sense of 
of lightness in this light touch mm. and he's controlling this beast because the the mm. big Steinway it's a little bit of an animal and when it starts rumbling at the bottom mm. and Beethoven often in his piano he could do things right down mm. and it would still have a clarity and mm. it wouldn't be sort of overwhelming and um, Sveinung is brilliant at controlling this this animal down at the bottom end of, of the piano so um, I'm, I'm really loving doing this piece uh, and it's 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 a fan it's a wonderful piece. It's Beethoven. He, he yes. tended to write wonderful pieces. But I think it's very much Beethoven standing, or sitting, and showing the public what he does there. Some of the, or his audience are hearing him for the first time in this piece. Mm. So it's like a manifesto, mm. almost. And I think Sveinung is really capturing that. I'm, I'm really blown away by his playing. I think yeah. he's stunning. Yeah, you can yeah. really look forward to it in yeah. the concert. Yeah. Your history with the violin, mm. I read somewhere, is uh, you didn't have such an easy start, or it wasn't... No. <laughs> <laughs> Does anyone? <laughs> no, that's true. But it's true. I actually didn't want to play the violin. No. My, my father had an old instrument from his childhood, and I wanted to play the oboe. I still do, actually. You want to play it? Yeah, and, but I had those metal teeth braces. Which are out now. Yes, they've gone. <laughs> but my dentist, he put these on and, and uh, he's, you know, he knew I was wanted to do music. I said, oh, I want to play the oboe. <laughs> and he said, oh, you can't play an oboe with these. <laughs> the dentist knew nothing about oboe playing. No. So, so my, f my father, so he, he played violin, so I squawked. And you know how it is, when you start playing a violin, it's really tough. Some of the noises you make are not pretty. <laughs> no, they're not anything similar to what no. we do later. And I remember after maybe half a year, I was really sort of unhappy. I couldn't make this thing sound good. And, but I was lucky. I had teachers around gently encouraging, not forcing. And my parents also, they, no one pushed, but they just sort of yeah, give it a little more time. And I was lucky. I got over that difficult time. And I always think for young people playing, there's a, there is a difficult time with a string instrument, but particularly violin, that it's a bit uncomfortable and it mm. doesn't sound good. But try to get through. Keep working. It will get. It, you will get through that. Yeah, yeah. that's true. Now, yeah. it's fantastic to have you back here, and we are so much looking forward to these week's performances. Mm. And so, please come, everyone, and you will enjoy it. Thank so will you. we. Yeah, Thank I'm you. looking forward to it very much. Thanks. So nice to talk to you.